Welcome to our Bible in the Bush series on the treasure. How to find life's treasure. And I'm wondering if you have found life's treasure. I believe and I am fully convinced that I have found the treasure that leads to eternal life. My name is Peter Franz and I'm with Gospel Fire International. And we are moving now into another clip, uh, another video, uh, on this series of the treasure. Many people are searching. People are looking everywhere. And if you look at all the people who have lived on the face of this earth, that have at some point even taken on some leadership, and you scrutinize carefully, you will discover that no one no one, absolutely no one, can even come close to Jesus Christ who came, who lived, who did miracles, who lived a pure life, who died as the pure Lamb of God on the cross and made a way of salvation for you and for me and who paid the price that we might have eternal life. Isn't that powerful? And the one who recognized this, probably the disciple who saw it, was John. And when you read the book of John, John becomes a nightmare to many. Many who just are seeking and many who would like to criticize the Bible. They can come to all kinds of, of things, even trying to criticize the other Gospels because they do not understand the context of the Hebrews and how everything is. But if you even look at that, from that perspective of the Hebrew culture and how it was written and what Jesus meant and what Mark and Luke and Matthew wrote about, you suddenly discover it, it comes out very clear, even in those Gospels, that Jesus truly said he was the Son of God. Now, John's gospel is just absolutely awesome. And I love this gospel. And usually when people make a, a decision for Jesus, this is the gospel I will lead them into. Read the book of John. It starts with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, and all things were made by Him. Talking about Christ, who is the center of our universe who is the one that makes everything be at where it is at. And as you look and as you study, you discover that in the book of, in chapter 3, verse 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he sent his only Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, that, that's what it's about. How do we get out from through this life through the valley of death, or even through the rapture as God is going to come one day. But how do we get eternal life? How do we break through? And this gospel makes it very clear. I just want to move with us now to chapter 11 of John's gospel in verse 25. And we see Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Jesus is standing at the tomb and he raises the dead Lazarus and he says, I am the resurrection, it says here, chapter 11, verse 25. It says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Wow, that is awesome. Then in, verse, in chapter 12, Jesus himself says, I am the light of this world. And then he continues on in chapter 14, in verse 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth and the life. No man, no man comes to the Father but by me. These are these are, unless it's, if this is not the truth, it's absolutely, it's numb founding. How can somebody say this? 
But Jesus, the Son of God, is saying this, and John, who is the disciple that Jesus loved, is writing it and putting it down. Then he says, whoever sees me sees the Father, and because I live, you will also live. You know, if you, you will also live if you put your trust in Jesus. In chapter 15, verse 5, this is another chapter, it says, Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. Or he says in, in verse 5, I am the true vine and you are the branches. Apart from me, Jesus says, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. You need Jesus if you want to amount to anything in this life and in going into the next life. In chapter 18, Jesus answers, My kingdom is not of this world. You say that I am a king. In fact, the, this is the reason I was born and I came into the world to satisfy, to testify to the truth. Everyone that is on the side of the truth, now listen carefully. This is what it says. Everyone that is on the side of the truth listens to me. Wow. That's what Jesus says. These, these statements are just absolutely powerful. Jesus wants you to have eternal life, and you can have eternal life if you turn to Christ. Now, Jesus has been put into the grave. It is, now John is talking about chapter 20, and so Peter and the other disciple are running towards the grave on Sunday morning. And both are running, and the other out, a disciple outruns him, which is John. And he, they come to the grave, and they see, they bend over, and they look in, and the, the strips of linen lying there, but they did not go in. John did not go in, but Peter did go in. And Simon Peter comes along and goes right into the tomb, sees everything, and he takes it into his hands. It's all lying there, but Jesus had resurrected, and... And, it, and then he's looking at this, and in chapter 8, John says, in verse 8 of chapter 20, John says these words. Finally, when the other disciple reached the tomb, he saw and he believed. You know what? This is what John did. He saw what had happened, and he believed that Jesus had resurrected because Jesus had talked about it through the course of the three and a half years Jesus had said that one day he would resurrect. And John was, you know, we human beings, it's so difficult for us to grasp it. But he knew the master. And when he saw these things, he believed. My prayer is that you would just believe. Believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And for John and for the other disciples, it was Easter Monday, Easter Sunday. Peace be with you. Jesus says, as he stands in front of his disciples, and he says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. This is what John writes. You can read it yourself. I tell you, this book will change your life. It is just absolutely powerful. And then John continues to write, and it's one of the last, last verses uh, in, written in his book, and he says, these things I have written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you will have life in His name, which means eternal life, that you will live and have and be able to one day be with Jesus. You see, the disciple of Jesus found the, not only found the treasure, he caught fire. And the treasure is in the person, in Jesus. The treasure in him is salvation. In him is assurance of salvation. You can be assured that you're going to make it to heaven. In him there is eternal life. There is hope and peace. There is a destiny. Oh, I wished you could just receive him. In a nutshell, it's going to take your choice to receive Jesus as your Savior and as your Lord. There are amazing miracles that are in this treasure, in Jesus. Even to today, people are dying to hear and find the treasure. And missions is so relevant today 
and God wants you to receive him as your Savior. I want to give you that chance right now. You can receive him as your Savior. What you do is you make a choice right now to say, I believe that Jesus is, the, is truly the way, the truth, and the life. I forsake my old life, that old life of sin and, and, I, and all the condemnation and the stuff that is there, all the baggage, I leave it behind. And I turn to Christ and I say, Lord, please come into my life. Be my Savior. Forgive me. What you did on the cross, I want it to count for me. And then say, Lord, I receive you right now. Be my God. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name, pray that prayer right now. And you will be saved. You will have assurance of salvation and start walking. Read the book of John for yourself. God bless you.